In the second reading today, we hear something that St. Paul wrote to the people of Corinth, and I will quote it. Paul wrote, I have been informed that you are quarreling among yourselves. This is what I hear. One of you will say, I belong to Paul. Another will say, I belong to Apollos. And still another, I belong to Cephas. He has my allegiance. You see, traveler, Peter, Paul traveled through the region, bringing the word of God, the news of Jesus Christ, to, pe to the people in many different communities. And Paul had laid the foundation of the new church, the new apostolic church, with the people before he left and went on his way to another place, another town. And so little by little the word got out and the Christian Catholic faith was founded. Then some others came along after Paul had left the towns and they either added to his teachings or they subtracted from his preached teachings. In other words, they watered down the true faith. But these others that came in, watering down the true faith, well, the newly converted felt very close to them, to the ones who had converted them. And so when they said, I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas. Each one was praising his own teacher and bragging about, if you will, his own new savior. Paul, in this second reading today, is accusing them of wasting time in arguing over who was the most important and who, over whose teachings they should be living their lives, rather than wasting time in arguing over who was the most important and whose teachings were the most true and right, when the obvious Savior of them all was the Lord Jesus of Nazareth. Paul also says to them, let them there be no factions among you. Rather, be united in word, in mind, and in judgment. Disunity, you see, among Christians has been a problem from earliest Christian times. There were factions 2,000 years ago. But their disunity at that time was a disunity within the church. Today, the tragic reality is that dissension has split the church into hundreds of sects and different denominations outside of the one true apostolic church founded by Jesus Christ. The descent of the 16th century Reformation has given us a multiple, a multiple of separated splinter churches. And their members say today, in effect, I belong to Martin Luther, or I belong to Calvin, or I belong to Mary Baker Eddy and so on and on. Some of this, you know, is our own fault today. Even though the Catholic Church is rooted in the teachings of the Apostles since the birth of the Church at Pentecost, and it is the deposit of all the teachings of God's truth and grace, we learn from the Second Vatican Council who told us the Church's members that is, you and me, fail to live by the truths 
with the same fervor they should have the truths of Jesus Christ's church. And the Vatican Council, inspired by the Holy Spirit, asks us to, and I quote, make a careful and honest appraisal in the church of whatever needs to be renewed. That's why in recent years we've heard about renewals in the church, changes of the things that can be changed, but never the things that cannot be changed, the dogmas and the doctrines in the Catholic Church. We see external changes, like the priest facing you rather than having his back to the people in the congregation. There have been changes in the Catholic household, but never has there been a change in those things that are unchangeable, namely the moral truths of the Church. The Council is teaching you and me that we have a responsibility today to live and act so as to bring about a reunion of all of Christ's children. Every time we compromise Catholic standards, which are the teachings of Christ, we diminish the great radiance that our church has. We inflict new wounds on the body of Christ. My sins and your sins are not a private matter between us and God. Our sins and any indiscreet public dissent weakens our family the family which is the Catholic Church, to which family we are all blessed to belong. Jesus Christ is calling each one of us to build up and restore his Holy Church's unity. And we don't need any special talent to do that. After all, the first people that he did call to be members of his Church were simple people simple working men and women, like fishermen who were his first apostles. He asks that we be faith-filled with a love for the church, living good lives and showing and exuding joy in our faith, that others will be drawn to him and to the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Our lives, if that is to be accomplished, must be exemplary. Must be exemplary. We must pray for those among us who fail. We must pray also that we will succeed so the Church will one day be only one in Christ. God bless.